Well, welcome to 3.30 this afternoon. The score is technology two, maybe it's five, Dan zero. So decided just to forge ahead and we're going to just have some fun. And, you know, I've decided I'm going to film some of the practice that I do. So that's where we're going to start today. Wednesday, we put in the work on Wednesday. So this is progress, not perfection. And we're just going to use a canvas. I've got a 12 by 24. This is one of Bob's canvases. So it's got a little gray tint to it. I'm going to put some liquid white on it in just a second. And I just accumulate over all the classes I do. I just, I wind up with tons of jars of liquid white that have just a little bit of paint at the bottom. But boy, don't get rid of it. If you take care of it, you can use this for a long, long time. And I have no way of checking that I'm aware of if my audio is good. And the video on the screen looks a little choppy to me. So we're just going to roll with, see what happens. I'll check out the edits in the Creator Studio afterwards. If you're wondering what this magic tool is, this is an ancient Chinese tool. You may find it locally to you in a wrapper like this. <laughs> Comes to you with the Chinese takeout. That is the best stir for liquid white that I have ever found. So that is free tips and consultations on a We Work on Wednesday. So I'm just going to take a two inch brush and just like we were prepping a canvas to do a full, full painting, I'm just going to pick up some liquid white and we're just going to put some dots around the canvas and we're going to tie those dots together. Try not to speckle the monitor I've installed over here to my right, just off, off camera. But just using some quick figure eights or crisscross strokes. Don't even have to take your uh, brush off the canvas here. When I get to the edge, I like to just pull in from the outside. In class, that keeps people from flinging paint off onto their neighbor. <laughs> We've had that happen a few times. It is pretty funny. <laughs> the neighbor doesn't always think so, but uh, that's all right. Just part of the fun. So just work this in. You know, even putting liquid white on is something that takes some practice. You'll figure out what size canvas you're going to work on. If it's practice or a full painting you're going to do. But you don't want soup on there and you don't want it dry. You kind of want the Goldilocks amount. You want it to be not too hot, not too cold. You want it to be just right. So you can see that has given me a pretty nice even distribution of paint here. Do some long horizontal and long overlapping vertical strokes. Just to make sure I've got it nice and even. Just want it smoothed out. Don't want any brush strokes. Don't want any pockets where it's deep and wet and that'll kind of make a pastel weird color. And you'll hit a few of those, no big deal. Roll with it if it does. Couple of tests you can do. Let me give you my favorite. The fingerprint check first. Do your middle finger in the middle. That's pretty easy. I do ring finger top right, pinky bottom right, thumb near the bottom left, and index finger um, Top left, let me see if I can hold my hand still enough in front of the camera for you. You want to be able to see your fingerprints still. So you still want to be able to see the lines of your fingerprints. I can't tell if you can see that real good on camera, but maybe if I hold it out here. To me on the preview, it looks like those are solid white, but I can still see the lines very, very well. So that's that's a good, good amount there. The number one question I get in class at this point is, do we need to paint over our fingerprints? We're going to put a lot of color and a lot of mountains and a couple of different skies on this one. So we don't have to worry about that. My second favorite test is something I learned from my buddy, Joe Coos. You can check out his videos at Painting with Coos, K-O-O-Z, uh, here on YouTube and Facebook. He is spectacular at this kind of painting and a magnificent instructor. Take a clean folded up paper towel, nothing magic about this. Gently, don't put, use any pressure because the, the roughness or the tooth of the canvas will make your soft paper towel 
pill a little bit and leave some lint balls on your canvas, which again, not a huge problem, but it's a bit of an aggravation if you weren't expecting it. And then it happens right while you're painting. So I did what I go vertically there. So let's flip over to a clean side of the paper towel. Same thing, same thing, just ever so gently. I'm really just making contact with the paper towel and going horizontally here. Just to take off what this will do, especially once you come back and just kind of brush out any of the marks, drag marks the paper towel left, is the exact perfect amount of liquid light on your canvas. How awesome is that? So I really want to do this as practice with mountains today. There's a couple different mountains I want to practice and just continue to improve on and I've, I've been pretty tickled with uh, some of my mountains in the last few classes we've done. So that, that's always fun. I'm just taking a paper towel and wiping out my uh, two inch brush there, just taking the, the excess liquid white out of it. I want to show you what I've got on my palette for the day. I'm going to set this liquid white to the side. I don't think we'll use that again, but I don't want it to go far away just in case we do need it. I've really only got three colors on my palette today. I've got titanium white, phthalo blue, and mountain mix. So we're just going to use different shades of all of those, do a couple different skies, and then build some amazing mountains. Now, if you've been painting for any length of time, you will likely wind up with things like I've got here, which if you buy the big tubes of paint, you wind up with lots of paint. You basically squeezed all of it out. You can kind of like your uh, toothpaste. I also have the lots of little ones. What I used for a long time was these uh, two uh, keys, I believe they called these, these little yellow things that you slide across the bottom and you roll it up really tight. I didn't like those. I split open lots of uh, tubes of paint with that, but I've literally got dozens and dozens and dozens of tubes of paint that are still hanging around. But what I love is a tool I got. It's just a tube ringer. You can get this on my website. You can get it from bobross.com, Amazon. doesn't really matter where you get it from, as long as it's a good... Um, I think this handle feels pretty plasticky PVC, but it, it, it holds pretty well. You just squeeze the tube between the, the two rollers it's got there and roll it up. And man, it just squeezes all the paint down to the end. You'll pinch your fingers in here only once or twice, and then you'll stop doing it. That's what it took me. And you just crank it down until it can't, won't go anymore. Don't push it that last quarter turn. If you can see all the colors in my uh, <laughs> rollers there, it's because I have squeezed too hard and I have punched a few holes in some of these tubes. But man, does that help you get every single piece out of that. Look how flat that is. Isn't that great? And so there's a few paintings worth of uh, mountain mix still in there. So let me see what's happening over here. And we are having some liquid sunshine here in central Florida. So that was a bit of a weather alert buzz. Just there's lightning out and about. We do live in the lightning capital of the world, so that's no big surprise. You may hear my fearless guard dog, who is currently right here at my feet. He does not like thunder and lightning, nor does he like the oven being on. So I'm surprised he's here at my feet. He'd normally be in Lori's closet, <laughs> hiding from either the weather or, well, I guess the oven's not on. So I'm just going to drag out a little phthalo blue so I can put in a couple of skies. Then for our mountains, I'm just going to use some mountain mix and several different shades of it. So um, I was so proud of myself on that last uh, video I posted for getting my <laughs> uh, spray paint done on the uh, knives and on the <laughs> collars of my brushes. I'll show you the knife in a minute because I actually overthumped myself and scraped some of that paint off already. So I'm ar I've already blown it with uh, with what I had there. So anyway, we're going to just use 
we're just going to use some different shades. Now, I had mentioned in that last video and got a couple of good emails and text questions about what I meant. I mentioned an acrylic palette or an acrylic rectangle I got off of Amazon. And I put one right here. And I actually have both I can show you. So I have um, three or four of the big Bob Ross uh, palettes. Same ones you can order from my website or bobross.com. And they're humongous. They're great. I love using these. And you can see this one's got a lot of miles on it. Lots of colors. And I've just found it easier to put on a piece of uh, waxy freezer paper that I actually get in about a 2,000 foot roll from a West restaurant supply company. It just makes cleanup so, so much easier. But I have done lots of practice painting on this palette because you can just scrape up the paint, practice again. You can do that with trees. You can practice getting snow to break like you were doing it on a mountain. Oh, and you can just do it with one brush one little daub of paint. You don't have to do a whole canvas. That's the point. You could do this with cardboard. So here's that rectangle. Let me hold something behind it so you can kind of see it. These, I, I don't even remember. I don't know. Maybe it was 15 bucks for like a five pack of these off of Amazon. I don't like the sharp corners, but I do tape them down to a table. I got one here just sort of protecting the top of my cabinet over there. And I use them to practice from time to time. We've used them in a few classes Good to practice. If you've got a palette anyway, practice on this. You do not have to burn through a canvas every time uh, you want to do some practice. The practice is the key. I prefer just painting a whole painting. I, I, I have done quite a bit of this kind of practice, but not in comparison with how, how many paintings I have done, because I would just rather do it. I would rather dive in and practice the steps, the sequence, and go all the way from liquid white to putting my initials on it, signing it when I'm done. Um, that's just me, that's how I like to practice. So I've done that on lots of different sizes. Oh, the smallest probably being, um, I haven't done many uh, smaller than 12 by 16 that I can think of. Most of mine are 12 by 16, 16 by 20s, 18 by 24s. Or these. This is a new kind of favorite size I've been playing with. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But <laughs> scraped off all my good black paint right there at the end. So if I flash you with lights, sorry about that. <laughs> but let's just put in uh, a basic basic sky for about half of this. And then maybe we'll put in a more uh, wintry kind of angry looking sky. I don't know exactly what we'll do here. So just got a one inch brush. Just going to pick up some phthalo blue right here, just tapping it in the brush. Nice even distribution of paint. Uh, oh, let's do, let's do kind of a loopy kind of sky instead of just straight crisscrosses. So you can literally get this can color on the canvas in almost any fashion that you want. You can kind of swirl in some circles like this. You just got to keep your brush moving. Keep your brush moving. Don't just work it in one area. Don't just work it into one flat old dead color. That won't be any fun. You want to clean off your brush, just kind of gently do it horizontally down here where you might have some water or some ground. Or like I said, we're going to come all the way forward with uh, mountains today. I'll keep a, a, pa a paper towel right here on my palette so I can just knock out the brush. I don't go through the cleaning procedure every time. Um, I'm going to blend or add more paint or anything like that. I just, just knock off the excess. You certainly can. I've got a great brush cleaning station here in the studio, but I don't just whale it. So it flails uh, the paint thinner mist everywhere. I don't, I don't have a cameraman standing right next to me like Bob did on the show. He got such a kick out of just peppering that poor guy with uh, paint. <laughs> Paint splatter cleaner, paint thinner. Uh, maybe one day we'll have somebody doing that for us. I don't know. That'd be funny. So I'm just, just blending with the same stroke I put it in with. We're not practicing clouds today, so I'm not 
oftentimes if I were going to whoop in a sky like this, I'd have come back around these lighter areas with a fan brush and some titanium white, maybe put a little red in there just to knock off the darkness of the white. But just, just want to have some variation, some beautiful darker blues, lighter areas. It'll go really well with our mountains. So there we go. There's, there's one sky on a little over half of our canvas. Um, let's just take a little bit of mountain mix, add it to that phthalo blue. So we're just going to darken it a little bit further, make it a little darker. Oh, and let's put in the more traditional crisscross stroke or X stroke. Now I'm real careful when I'm painting either in class or for fun that I go with my regular pace here. And I'll show you why. If I go too slow, the logical math brain that I have winds up chopping in this kind of almost exact lattice work. And if I try to keep this kind of even pressure going all the way down to the horizon, I just wind up with this weird, I don't like it. I, I just, it, it doesn't, it's not what I have in mind for how fun this style of painting should be. So let me reload and go at this like I would with some pace because I don't want those straight lines. Those straight lines drive me a little wonkier than I already am. And if they're okay with you and that's what you want to do in your world, go for it. I ain't telling you you can't. I'm just telling you speed is your friend. I think it gets your brain out of the way. It just sort of lets you go with whatever's happening on the canvas because the paint's going to blend and do what it wants to do. Brush is taking a lesson from my head and has all kinds of hairs falling on it, doesn't it? So let's just clean out the brush. We'll do a quick blending pass. We'll step back and see if we want to add any more color. I love these natural variations that happen. I hope you can see those on camera. Oh, we'll sneak in a little of this dark here at the ground level too, just to just to stay consistent with what we got going. Doesn't really matter. This is practice. Still want to do it right though. If you practice the wrong thing over and over and over, you're just going to be really good at doing things a way you don't really want. And that may or may not be what you you want long term. You get too much anywhere, just go back and work over it. It'll sit right down. It'll sit right down for you. Cool. So let's jump in. We'll do our first set of mountains. I don't know how long this practice session is going to be. As you're setting up YouTube Live, it tells you that if you do less than 12 hours, you can automatically archive that as a uh, public video in your regular library of videos. So I don't think we'll be anywhere near 12 hours. 12 hours would put us well beyond my bedtime, which will be upon us here in about four and a half or five hours. So there's feeding time here at the zoo between now and then. And Lori and Andrew will be getting home from work and school there. And uh, yeah, it's not going to be that late. So let's put in, I was kind of thinking about what we would do I'm going to start back here with just some distant, distant mountains. Maybe over here, I kind of like this part of that sky, that practice sky that we did. So I'm going to use a fan brush for this. Sometimes doing super distant mountains, I like using a fan brush. And I'll show you why. You don't want much detail way off there in the distance. I don't have tons of paint. I just want to kind of see what I'm getting. And I just want to have kind of just, just a mountainy shape. Doesn't have to be a perfectly peaked mountain. It can be a little rough and jaggedy out here. Have it be a little darker in some areas and maybe it just comes down like that. Because the fan brush can really give you some magical things as far as slope, some highlighted areas, some darker areas. And oh, I, I just, I, for some reason, it just sort of makes my heart sing on helping things look like they're really far away. And so that's super, super quick, super, super far away. I'm going to just darken it a smidge and put maybe, maybe just a little more, a little more dark coming down this way. 
don't know why. Just sort of felt like that's what we ought to do. And we'll just pull a little, a little more down here at the base like this. I am going to soften that with a one inch brush. I am not going to put any snowy snowy on there with a knife. I am going to knock out the gray out of my brush here and just pick up a little touch of white just ever so gently, just to give it the idea of something a little snowy happening back there. You know, I've, I've been paying attention more on any TV shows that we happen to watch that might have some mountains in them or looking at pictures of what Bob did over the years on uh, the joy of painting. And man, the mountains come in all different, different kinds of shapes and sizes, don't they? I see normally we would never go in and, and move this mountain once we put some highlights on it. But if you do things gently, you can, and you can get in there and get away with it. If you're going for speed, I should have moved that mountain first anywhere I wanted it to move, then put the highlights on it, and then put some mist here at the bottom. And that's what I want to do right now. I'm going to use a clean one inch brush. I am going to smush out some of my titanium white. So when we're ready for snow, it's ready to go. Just, you know, practicing getting snow and shadow sides on your knife is brilliant. So I'm going to show you that when we start doing a little more of that. All I did was pull out flat on my palette a good run of the titanium white. So I scooped some of it up with my knife and squished it flat out. I'm just going to take this one inch brush and just, just ever so slightly get a few little kisses on that corner just so we can put in a little mist down here at the footy foot of this mountain. Now we're going to tap this out just like we would normal uh, mist at the bottom of mountains or trees. I just want to have a definite misty area. So when we put in our next row of mountains, that'll drift even further back, even further back. Now that white won't stand out a lot. Don't want it to. Don't want it to. Good stuff. Let's keep going with that fan brush. I like how that worked. And I want to show you kind of a mid-range mountain as we, we're moving closer to us. So I'm just pulling in a little bit more midnight black, or excuse me, mountain mix into my working pile here. And you can see I got all kinds of different shades of, of dark there. And, uh, oh, who knows? Where's, where's this mountain going to live? Shall we have it live? Uh, maybe it comes this way and it's just a little bit bolder. Okay. It can have any kind of shape we want it to. Could it have another kind of outcropping area? Maybe it comes a little harsher down this one. Sure it can. Sure it can. Gently pull. We're going to kind of shape this. I'm doing this a little bit with the fan brush as I go. So I guess I, I do get a little credit for moving mountain before putting those highlights on it with the other one. Just decide, just decide. You decide what your mountain does in your world, and I'll party with this one. Just kind of working it back and forth, and we're not committed to a thing on this practice. We could change this any way we want, any way at all. Oh, I like how this fan brush does that from time to time. Maybe this is kind of the beginnings of a, a little runoff. Who knows? Who knows? We'll put some cool highlights on there in just a minute. Knock out that gray we were working with. Let's grab our brush that we did some of that pulling on, and I'm just going to soften some of this. I, it's a little close and bold for me on what I was looking for, so we're going to just 
soften this. Oh, I like how that happened. There's a happy little accident. I wish you could see that a little better. Maybe when I move the camera at the end to show you the finished practice, you'll be able to see that. That is just a cool little rocky looking snowy kind of area pocket. And I did not mean to do it. I can assure you. Go gently. And if you have to pull a couple of times, you can. If you go too hard, you're just going to flatten out your color. So I encourage you to avoid that. And if your mountain gets a little too far on you, well, just, just kind of gently back and forth. Let's do a little highlight with that fan brush again. Let's we'll see if we can get away with uh, using just some white on this fan brush that's getting pretty dark. Oh, and let's just pull in, just let the canvas grab what it wants. No pressure, just like we were doing it with the knife now. Don't want this to be too bold. We're just giving it the idea, just the idea. Just the idea. Just an idea. So I like that. That's a bolder, snowy look, isn't it? That's kind of cool. A little too bold though, so let's just soften it down a smidge. Pulling a little more. You can see how quick that color gets mixed with that mountain color that's on there. Oh, there we go. That's more better. That's what we were looking for. All right. Well, I'm just killing that highlight area I told you about. I was going to hope you saw at the end, but that's okay. Oh, maybe we're going to just put a few highlights down on that little erosion thing. Let's finish up this second mountain here. With just a little more, a little more snow, rocky look, whatever it is to you. Just want to kind of. I've watched a couple of shows that has that chimney, chimney rock, I think it's called out, out west. Very cool. Not sure I'm buying that a bear clawed the rock apart by chasing somebody up it, but I can see how. Our indigenous ancestors to that part of the world, maybe on a starry night and a little too much peyote and trying to impress the young squaws of the tribe that they may have uh, embellished that story a bit. And let's just kind of see what happens if we missed out the bottom of this. I'm hoping we might get lucky, might have enough paint here that some of this will start looking like a little bit of uh, distant foliage way off. Who knows? If it doesn't, fighting a sneeze, fighting a sneeze. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hopefully I got the microphone turned off. Part of what uh, technology was whooping my butt was uh, I cannot get YouTube to tell me which, which microphone I'm queued up on. So I've got my little lapel mic on. And I'm just putting in a few, same way we do some footy hills, but I've got just a little residue paint left over from the sky and cleaning it down here in the water. So it's got a little bit of dark kind of baked in there. I just want to give it the idea of something going on here. I love having stuff at the foots of my mountains, but it's still so far away and we'll cut, wind up probably covering up a good bit of it. So just, just adding a layer, just by adding some color, adding a little different idea, it just helps set our mountain down in our picture. And just adds that layer of depth. I'm not at all worried about this mess here. So let's step back, kind of take a look. Cool. Now let's put in a real mountain. So I'm going to take a big old knife. I'm just going to squish out a little more mountain mix. It's fine if it's got some of that gray, but I really just want that roll of paint out there on the edge of my knife. Yes, I still have some of that other dirty color there, but that's no problem. So let's have our 
oh, over here. Oh, why not? Let's start over here just for fun. We'll, we'll have a big old mountain peak. That'll be our kind of main one over here. And just have it go right off the canvas. Let's get a little darker so it really feels like it's right here with us. We'll have this kind of wander down this way a bit. Oh, let's just get it to drop a little bit. Uh, I like that part of that back mountain. Oh, practice. That's what it's for. Oh, let's just pull that in. Yeah, that's fine. We'll kind of have some mountain run off here. You don't have to, but you can use up some of your, your color here if you want to. Just remember, go back and scrape off all this underneath. All you care about is that outside edge. Scrape as much of this off as you can. There we go. That's going to be enough for that one. This one I will move with a one-inch brush. Let's use... Ah, this one be fine. The one I just did with the footy hills and, and all of that. So, hmm, let's have... What that is. Phone call. I will just let that go for a second. Let's just pull this down, give it some shape, and see what we're getting. Oh, I like that one. Like that one. Let's kind of just keep that theme going on this side. Some of these slopes go back off our canvas here to the right. We'll have, let's have this mountain kind of be our edge of our continental divide here or whatever it is. We'll just kind of pull some of this down and we'll We'll cover this part up with a, another mountain here in a second, or I don't know. Maybe we'll change our mind and do something watery or some reflection down here. I don't know. I don't know that it really matters at this point. I like to switch to the small knife to do some highlights. So let me show you. Loading the knife is absolutely critical to having success with the snow, and you need to practice this right. So smush that white out as flat as you can get it. I like to put my knife all the way straight up and down into the paint and then scooch, you're going to get this beautiful little roll of paint out there on the edge of the knife, and it stands up nice and tall for you so that you just get close, feel that paint grab, and go. Fight the urge to go back over the same area until you've developed a very delicate touch. Can you go back over the same area? Yes. If you've taken a class with me, I have told you no. Please understand that it's for your safety and the well-being of everyone in class, because this is one part people really struggle with, and I am no different. I got my butts kicked, butt kicked so many times trying to learn how to do snow, I just got so frustrated, but once you'll hold it so gently, look how vertical my knife is. My, my fingers are just barely on the edge. I feel the knife grab. You can vary the pressure a little bit. You can wiggle each way. You can come this way. The key is, as you're coming down, letting that paint just break. That's what Bob would always tell us in his shows. Now watch. I do have some color on there, but if you'll go gently over the same spot, you can. But if you use any pressure there at all, you're just going to kill your snowy side. Now, I'm coming in here with a clean knife. This is a little thicker than I want it to be, so I'm going to try and rescue myself with not having to scratch it off. And I'm just going to gently, gently, gently pull some of it the other way. Just to change that top, I probably should have wiped my knife there. You probably saw that. Turned very blue on me. I'm okay with that, actually, because of how it looks. Now I'm going to step back and kind of take a look-see from over here. I'm digging what we got going on. Now I'm going to add a bluey, shadowy side, kind of a gray, just to kind of keep going with our mountain theme. 
color here and use up some more of that mid uh, mountain mix. So I've just got a little bit of blue added to part of that mountain mix in white. It's all streaky. And I'm just going to go on the other side where the sun would be blocked more. So I'm just going to basically deliver it the same way, just in reverse. Any of our left-handed brethren should appreciate that. That probably is the first one I've done that looked correct to you. When you're doing your shadow sides like this, you need much less shadow color than you do on the, the snowy side. So let yourself use much, much less paint because it just needs the idea. If you try and put too much detail in mountains when they're still far away, you probably won't like your finished product. I think that's going to drive you a little crazier than you may already be. So let's kind of break up our uniformity here. Kind of just pull this in this way, and then it's going to come over and just go. So I don't know, maybe this one just comes straight down this way. So you can just keep playing with it, and we could change it from here if we needed to. You can leave that thicker if you like it. If you don't, gently, ever so gently. Oh, be careful going over things again like this. You will have funny words fall out of your mouth. <laughs> Maybe you're a little more pure at heart than I've been in my lifetime. Funny words fall out of my mouth when I mess up my uh, the feel of my... Uh, snow that I was going for. I put it in a little peak right here in the front. You didn't even have before if you want to. You get some comfort going. You can go with some speed. Oh, is that fun? Use a small edge of your knife too. You got a 90 degree to the big edge of that blade, a tiny little one, and you can get, oh, let's get up there close, that little half a rice grain, half a Tic Tac worth of paint on there and just just barely oh just barely you just got to give it the idea any any snowy side you want to stand out as an individual just needs a little shadow underneath it now you can get crazy crazy putting in some shadows here and there and there and here if you want to give your mountain all kinds of character and and different wiggles and jiggles and all kinds of different feeling faces. Just take your time. Be willing to practice some of this, like we've talked about. Just You can go straight into some mountain mix if you want to. I love doing that. Like back here on this super, super backside of this mountain, I think like right here, there would just be some areas the sun would not be hitting very much. I mean, Sasquatch got to have a place to take Mrs. Sasquatch up to watch the sunset or the sunrise or count the stars or I don't know exactly where baby Sasquatch has come from, but I'm guessing it'd be someplace that looks like this, don't you think? Oh, let's sneak in there. We'll, we'll just pretend there's a little tiny, little tiny. Oh, just ever so carefully. You can spend hours and hours and hours there on your mountain if you want to. So let's miss this one out. We'll move on to the next one. How about that? I'm kind of getting a mishmash of brushes down here, so I don't really know what I got going on, and that's okay. Let's just mist out the bottom of this one. Oh, and we're going to keep right on going. This will be great. I don't go all the way up the side if you don't want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to just turn this kind of bottom area. I didn't like that little part of that where the snow ran off there. And don't do your mist just chopped in all one height. That, that, mm. I, I'm, I'm constantly paying attention in class because thankfully I'm teaching a lot. I've got uh, eight classes on the calendar coming up for April. Two of them are big over uh, at the One Daytona Art Festival not this weekend, this weekend will be Easter weekend, it's next weekend. And I'm really just trying to continue to get better as a teacher. And when we're doing mist on a mountain, 
I, I show folks how to do it a couple of times because I go very, very gently so we can do it more than once. And I, I'm using words like don't go in just willy nilly and just chopping here and there. And inevitably in a class of say 15 or 18 people, two or three are clubbing in like right in the middle. And I just, I mean, it's their world. They can do what they want. Yes, that's true. But I don't know how to, what words would have prevented that. I just breaks my heart for them when they, when I can tell they're a little frustrated and they aren't quite on the same page. But part of that's a learning curve too. So that's not all bad, not all bad at all. So what should we do now? Should we have a bookend kind of mountain over here? I'm good with that. I like those big mountains. I like big mountains and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. So let's, um, we kind of had a, a sharp peak one there. Let's have it kind of a little more of a rolling edge. Kind of comes up to a, a summit or a peak here, maybe. I just don't want it to be too perfect. Maybe it's got a little nub going off the back there. All we're doing is getting this dark value in the canvas. We could not care less what's happening under here. Don't wear that stress. You don't need it. If you want to, and your mountain's going to be big and bold, use that color underneath. It'll just kind of help you do the, the moving mountain step. But make sure you're spending the time to scrape off this underneath. Oh, what are we going to do with this termination coming down here? How about, how about it kind of just is a little bit of rolling foothills or even uh, maybe it's a, a little bigger and this will be, we'll make this kind of a, oh, that's the kind of shape we'll give it where it's kind of a, the water. Maybe there's a glacier in there. Maybe we'll sneak one of those. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. See if we like it as it as it unfolds here. All right. Let me get that knife cleaned off. Quick check on the old uh, telephonic device, which I'm using for a camera here. Excuse me. Stand by. Sorry about that. The bracket I use makes it almost impossible to text at the same time, which is good. I won't be doing that very often, but uh, bad weather and and folks reaching out, I will certainly try to respond. That's more important than practice, isn't it? Maybe some of these are more straighter, kind of ruggedy, kind of slopes here. Mm -hmm. I want to have some of that come this way from in front there. Yeah, let's have this. Some of this will come this way. Some will continue out that way, but not too far. Not too far. We'll have some of this as kind of a channel for, uh, yeah, that'll be all right, won't it? We'll have that just kind of pulling out a big old sleepy glacier kind of feel. See how you can just move it and change it? And if we changed our mind, we could change it right now. No problem. No big deal. So let's mix up. Oh, let's use some of this gray and a little bit of the blue in it. And we're going to do some of the 
the the kind of back here part of this glacier first. And I just want it to look cold and go back and forth. And we're going to pull some snow and other shadows on this as we're coming down here. So I like to pull in some things like this to then layer on top of. So I'm actually going to make that a little darker. Very gentle here. Be very careful with the amount of paint because it won't take much. I just want to have that be a little darker. A little darker. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Kind of that cold blue ice is the feel we're going for. And that's a little sharp blue on the on the camera there. So clean knife ever so gently barely kissing that's making way more noise than i'm actually touching that's that's a little gentler there isn't it so let's bring down some snow and kind of cap this bad boy off oh with some things like that and some of this will just be good good learning you may that you may never do with some of this on an actual painting for someone or for fun for yourself play with it that's the whole point of practice at least that's what i think it is because you can do absolutely anything you want to on this canvas sometimes liquid white or titanium white will get a little dry piece in it that's all right make some cool shapes and if you want to get rid of that then you get rid of it no problem see how gently i'm going oh you watch any bill alexander video boy he's firing it in there i love the way he gets so jazzed up my personality more aligns with bob's i think that's why i'm drawn to watching a guy like bill because it's just different than me oh and let's just pull in a little snow as we get down here and kind of let it bounce and be a little bit over the edge of some of that. Oh, and lay it on thick some places if you want to. When that dries, people will come touch that part of your uh, picture and just be like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Well, I don't know about you, but my conscience will let me tell them, oh, I spent hours and hours with just this tiny little chisel brush to make all those shapes for you. You may say, damn, you wouldn't. And I would say, oh, but I probably would. Why not? Why not? Some sun might hit some of those differently in your world. That's fine. This mountain ain't your thing. That's okay. That's why I'm showing you a few different ways to get there. I don't often do the shadow first, so I am really enjoying the practice on this, doing that. It is pretty cool when you've got some shadow in, and then, then you come in and put in some snow right over top of it. Boy, does it really just kind of put that shadow right down in there, hopefully right where you wanted it to be. You can grab it and just pull the edge a little. It'll really just help look like the uh, wind blew over that peak there. Maybe you got a little sunlight dancing right over here just to pull some of that out and kind of down that away. Why not? Why not? Just kind of have that pull out into the beautiful sun here at the bottom. And I've had people say so many times now when I'm, I'm painting a demo, oh, oh my gosh, that's such and such a mountain or such, such and such a park or this or that. And rather than try to question them or tell them I have no idea what you're talking about, I've never heard of nor been to what you're suggesting, Somebody's having that kind of emotional connection and clearly knows the destination they're speaking of. I just say, oh, I didn't know you could tell. So am I lying to them? Well, I suppose. 
I don't know. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Let's kind of beef that up because I kind of doinked that top, didn't I? I would just kind of join him up with the rest of the mountain back there. And pull some of that down and just, oh, dark, 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 shadowy, shadowy goodness there. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, let's keep going. Get this one finished off down here. Maybe, maybe we've got more of a traditional peak here. So we'll probably come back and put a little more snow on this in just a sec on that front side. But just kind of changes the shape. Mixes it up a little. I even like to do that with the shadow side colors. As far as having some dark and some blue and some white. Just because who knows how light would be playing off the clouds. The, there's water nearby. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Not me. Don't know that I even care. This is practice. Practice, practice. A little more snow down the front of this. Ooh, I like that. I made a little snow in there. Oh, I forgot those whole uh, those whole slopes right there, didn't I? All right. Well, we're sneaking up on fifty-one minutes here. I am thinking an hour is likely to be enough practice time. So let's figure out what we're going to do to finish off this bottom piece. And we're going to call this practice session complete. I did not publicize this super well. So if I'm reading the YouTube screen right, I believe I'm talking to myself here on this first YouTube live, but that's okay. I am going to get this technology worked out and be the butt kicker instead of the butt kick E. So if you come back and watch this one, drop me a line about uh, comment and email a text about uh, if the audio was okay. If you did the practice, if you like practice, hate practice, <laughs> I still have fun. I, I, I tend to, like I said before, do, do whole paintings as opposed to too many just practice things. But just paint a little every day. Paint a little every other day. You know, what's that old uh, musician's thing? If he doesn't practice one day, he knows. If he doesn't practice for two days, his audience knows, or something like that. Well, same kind of theory or thinking would certainly apply to painting like this. Because it will not take you long to have success with this. You will find some things you are really enjoying doing. You'll find some things that you won't do again because you didn't like how it turned out. And that is just fine. You need those experiences. Oh, let's make this a little bolder, like a little storm's blowing up our steep slope here. Yeah, let's kind of fuzz that out there. Can you see the mist happening there on camera? Let's see. Yeah, I think so. So this is just happened. This is just, there's no sliding. Not yet. I'm going to wipe out my brush. Great way just to fuzz out. It really helps sit your mountain down in your painting when you do mist like this. And see how they just start looking like little little tree -y things? I don't know how much of that you can see on the old video device there, but uh, yeah, that blue is still a little bright for me in that. Uh, Little channel there, so maybe we're going to sneak in a little, a little dark, just to quiet him down a little bit. Just gentle, just pulling a little. Don't do the whole thing. 
Oftentimes, if you need to just soften something, oh, it takes so little of it, you just almost can't believe it. So you go charge in there with too much, it's just going to be too abrupt of a change, and you probably will not have done what you hoped. Fair, I like that. There's some better variation. Let's put a big old boulder or two in it, just in a, a tiny little place here and there. You know, maybe it really tore off a piece of this mountain as it rolled by. Huh? Oh, just put in a little rocky pole here and there. Oh, don't like that. Don't like that at all. So we're going to wipe off the knife and take a lot of that. Just soften it out. Get it to sit down in there and play a little nicer. Oh, we are getting some rain. And we'll put a little uh, snow cap over the top of that just so it looks a little more set down in there. That's a little better. Soften that. I don't want it to be too bright. There we go. That just sort of lumps up the part of our erosion area there. Well, what do you think? Should we just put in a couple of rows of footy hills and maybe a big tree or two on this side? That's okay with me. So why don't we grab some of our, oh, let's go pretty dark now. I'm going to leave some of that uh, misty area. That one will just tap in kind of a rolling hill feel. I get a little bigger, get a little more pain as we see what we're getting and we like it. Go back and reload. Oh, maybe this is the coming right down to a little body of water or something over there. That's what we'll do. We'll tap in a little reflection. See, you really can, if you'll go gently and want to go back and add a little something. If you go too hard like that right there, I just mushed out all my color. That's why we all are warned, warned, warned. Gentle pressure for the most part. And just go with whatever you've done. Whatever happened on your canvas there, that's it. Just, just be okay with that. Be okay with that. So let's, uh, oh, it's in my hand. The old hiding spot under the palette. I'm taking that cl relatively clean uh, one inch brush and let's just bump up the tops of some of these. They'll look like some of those distant, distant trees on the top of this ridge. Do skip some areas. Even if you go back to them, that's fine. But don't do them all from left to right or right to left. You, you, that will bother your eye most of the time. I have discovered it does mine anyway. So I just want to have some reflection here. Pull straight down. I've got enough color on my dirty brush here. Kind of starting to give me the idea where my shoreline is. Let it vary. Maybe this is curving towards us on both sides. There we go. Let's give it a little soften. Again, just straight down. Sounds like the lovely Mrs. Wilcox and Andrew just got home, so the dog will likely show his enthusiasm, as hopefully they will. So we are working out a good time here. To be finishing up this first YouTube Live. And if you're watching this video on replay, I appreciate you doing that. I hope you've learned something. We will need a smidge of that liquid white, won't we? Because we want to put in this uh, shoreline over there. I will do a much better job spreading the word on where and when this uh, next YouTube Live will be. 
you've got an idea or a painting you'd like to see happen in this style, let me know. If I've got it in my repertoire, I will. If we need to add it to a practice session, I'll be glad to do that. I am certainly open to learning new scenery and new scenes. Been doing some deep in the woods, using one of Bob's episodes as an inspiration for myself called Secluded Forest. Oh, I love that. It's such a cool painting on those black canvases. It's just magical. Cool. Well, let's let this practice conclude here at just over an hour. A couple little ripples over the water like we always do right on your reflection. Just help set them down in there. Don't need many. Don't have to be big. Do keep them mostly horizontal. And with that, I'm going to call this practice done. This is what I've done before. I'm going to do it again. I did grab a little paint thinner. I've got my little strip liner brush. I'm going to go into, oh, let's use some of that phthalo blue. Such a beautiful blue. Thin, 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 thin it down like ink. Turn, turn, turn. Twist it. Look at it running down my palette. That's the paint thinner. That's how thin you want it to be, but with more paint in it. So it's got better color. However you want to sign your painting is fine. I do mine with a D and a W, and I'll show you what I've done on practices before. And I liked it, so I'm going to do it again. One of Grandin's first, actually, I believe it was his first competitive soccer coaches back when he was like 11, referred to practice as prax. And I just love that. He had such a great accent. He's a heck of a coach, too. So let's call this three. What is today? The 27th? 20. 20. Four. I hope you are having a great day. We're enjoying the liquid sunshine here. We'll see you next time. Keep on practicing.